Hey, what is hopefully another short video here coming at you. We're going to look at what are the trends with various salts. If we have a cation or a specific anion, can we determine if this is going to produce a solution that's slightly acidic or slightly basic or have no effect on it whatsoever? So you've seen this before, and this is important, it, but it looks at conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So we know that if we have a strong acid or an extremely strong acid, it will have a very weak base or conjugate base. And that varies, right? So the weaker the acid gets, the stronger the conjugate base is gonna get, or vice versa. If I have a very strong base, its conjugate acid should be very, very, very weak. And the weaker the base gets, the stronger the conjugate acid is. So extremely strong bases have pretty much negligible or super weak conjugate uh, acids. But once we get into the middle where we're looking at weak bases, they're gonna have corresponding weak uh, conjugate acids. And at some point they'll bypass each other. So let's look at cations and anions. And when we put them into solution, if we put a salt into solution, is it gonna affect the pH at all? So we'll start with cations, positively charged ions. What we have to do is look at what is the positively charged ion and what is it the conjugate acid of? So, and then we'll have two options. It's either the conjugate acid of a very strong base or the conjugate acid of a weak base. So if we look at something like sodium, might not immediately be obvious what sodium, potassium, what are they the conjugate acid of? Well, if you don't see any additional components here, if this isn't a polyatomic ion, if this is just a single metal cation, then what it is the conjugate acid of is a hydroxide. So sodium cation is the conjugate acid of sodium hydroxide. Potassium is the conjugate acid of potassium hydroxide. So in this case, these are the conjugate acids of very strong bases. Now, all the reactions we've seen, we've looked at, if we put sodium hydroxide in water, um, what do we get? We should get that sodium cation and that hydroxide um, anion. All the reactions we've looked at have forward and reverse reactions. And technically, this one does too. If we dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, we're gonna see it dissociate into those components. We're gonna see it produce hydroxide, which is gonna make the solution basic. Do we see the reverse reaction? Well, maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But for all intents and purposes, the forward reaction is happening to a much greater degree, over 99%. So for this to function as a base, the sodium hydroxide has to dissociate and go in that direction. If we want the sodium cation to function as an acid, though, we would have to see it going in the reverse direction, sorry, and giving us something acidic. So it would need to uh, absorb or protonate essentially, um, remove these OHs from the solution. But we don't really see that happening. And you can see the forward arrow, pretty much non-existent in this case, because this is such a strong base. It's gonna pretty much give me 100% ionization, so I'm not gonna see the reverse reaction happening. So if the cation is the conjugate base, or sorry, conjugate acid of a strong base, it's not really gonna function as an acid, and it will have no effect on the pH. Well, what if it's something else? What if it happens to be the conjugate acid of a weak base? And what would that look? Well, if this is gonna protonate water, it would give us ammonia right there. So there is our weak base, and this is the conjugate acid of that. So normally when we're dealing with our weak base, water is gonna be an acid and it's gonna protonate it. Well. In this case, because it's a weak base, that, um, oops, sorry, that reverse reaction is actually very likely to happen. Um, here we go. 
So we could have it like that. We could have just regular water and we could produce OH. Either way, the point is water is protonating that weak base and we're getting the weak conjugate acid. And you'll notice this is very much a reversible reaction. This doesn't give me 100% ionization. This gives me four, five, maybe 6% ionization. So not only is the forward reaction likely to happen, but the reverse reaction is likely to happen as well. So that means if we have some salt where we put uh, ammonia into the solution, it's very possible that some amount of that is gonna function as an acid, protonate the water, give me H3O plus, and that ammonia ion again. So because the ammonia, or ammonium, sorry, ammonium is a conjugate acid of a weak base, it can actually function as a weak acid enough to affect the pH, and in this case, so if we have the cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base, then it will have an effect on the pH. We will get a slightly acidic pH because the reverse reaction is possible. This reaction where it functions as an acid can happen and will happen in that solution. Um, actually, let's go back to the whiteboard. Sorry, let's look at the opposite. Let's look at anions. So uh, here we go. This is what I want to do. Sorry. All right. So if I have anions, I'm going to see the opposite. Whatever the anion is, let's say chloride. That should be the conjugate base of some acid. How do we know what acid? Well, they usually what we want to do is simply protonate that. If we add an acidic proton and H plus to that, what do we get? We can see then for chloride, the conjugate acid is HCl, hydrochloric acid. Well, this is a strong acid. We know that same way. If we put that in water, what we're gonna see is the vast majority of that is gonna ionize. It's gonna dissociate into its component parts, one of them being that acidic proton. Well, what's the likelihood that the reverse reaction happens? Pretty much negligible. It's gonna be far less than 1% of the time are we gonna see these coming together and coming back to being this um, uh, starting or original acid. So that's what, but that's what we have to see, right? We'd have to see chloride in the solution and H3O pluses, and they'd have to be able to protonate it and make this and that. That doesn't really happen. So because that reverse reaction is so unlikely, we pretty much see uh, the exact same thing that we saw with our uh, strong base and its conjugate acid. If we're dealing with a, an anion that is the conjugate base of a strong acid, because the reverse reaction is unlikely to occur, this will have no effect on the pH. If we have a uh, conjugate base that is the conjugate base of a weak acid. Let's say, let's say the acetate ion. And hopefully I'm remembering this and writing this correctly. We see acetate. What is acetate the uh, conjugate base of? Like same way, let's protonate it. And we can see it's the conjugate base of acetic acid. And we know acetic acid is a weak acid. It's not one of the six or seven strong acids listed in our book. So normally, what does acetic acid do? It goes into solution, it protonates a water, we get H3O plus, and we get our conjugate base, that acetate ion. Same thing, it's a weak acid. So not only is the forward reaction likely to occur, the reverse reaction can, is also likely to occur. Well, if I didn't start with acetic acid, but instead I started with acetate, Maybe we had sodium acetate or something like that. I'm gonna add that to the solution and I'm gonna get these acetate ions floating around. Well, what's gonna happen when that comes into contact with water? It's gonna function as a base. It's gonna be protonated by the water. We're gonna get this and we're gonna have OH ions floating around in the solution and we're gonna have a slightly basic solution. So because for a weak acid, the reverse reaction is likely to occur. That means if we have the conjugate base of that weak acid, it is also a weak base and it can function as a base to some degree in solution. So in this case, if the anion is the conjugate base of uh, 
a weak acid, it will make or give us a slightly basic pH. Last example uh, or, or type of thing you're going to see, and then we'll look at some salts and we'll just break them down and see how's that going to happen, is if we have a cation that is a small, highly charged metal. And if we do, it's going to form a weakly acidic solution. What is a small, highly charged metal ion? The higher up on the periodic table we go, the smaller we get, and a high charge. We want to see a charge of a plus three or a plus four. Um, so we might see some of our transition metals being here as well. But aluminum is a really good place to start. Relatively high up on the periodic table, not very large. Large charge, though, like we said, plus three in this case. Why is that important? Well, when we dissolve it, it's going to be solvated by water molecules. The water molecules, the net partial negative charge on the oxygen is going to orientate towards the positive charge on that ion. Since it's small, those water molecules can get pretty close to it. And because it's very highly charged, their interaction or their attraction is going to be very large. What that means is they're going to be pulling the, elect uh, the oxygen, already being very electronegative, is going to pull that electron density towards it. Well, because of the strong attraction to the aluminum, it's going to pull even stronger. So that bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen is going to be weaker and weaker because of that, which means that hydrogen can more easily now come off. And what does that mean? If the hydrogen comes off and goes to something else, it protonates it. It functions like an acid. So because of that, when we put a small, highly charged metal cation in solution, it makes it more likely for those water molecules that it's dissolved in to be able to function as an acid and protonate something. And now we have our hydronium ion in solution. And we have a slightly acidic, or, uh, yep, a slightly acidic solution. Um, so how do we classify these? We have to look now at a salt. The examples we did with the sodium, the Na plus, or the chloride, the Cl minus, the acetate ion. Those, of course, don't happen on their own. We don't just get um, positively charged ions or negatively charged ions without a counter ion. So what did that really mean? It means we had to have some initial ion, some ionic solution that we dumped in, uh, into water or some sorry, ionic solid that we dumped into water. So if we had sodium acetate and we dump that into water, what do we get? We get Na plus and we get the acetate ion. So now from that component, we look at what do we have? Well, this is the conjugate acid of a strong base. So it's not going to have any effect. This is the conjugate base of a weak acid. So it will make or give us a slightly basic pH. So I know since this has no effect and this is going to make it basic, our final solution will be something basic. What if we had ammonium nitrate? I could put that in solution. Same way, we break it up into a component's ions, our cation and our anion. This is the conjugate acid of a weak base. So it's gonna make the solution slightly acidic. This is the conjugate base of a strong acid, nitric acid. So it's not going to have any effect on the pH. So in this case, looking at those two component ions, one having no effect, one making the solution slightly acidic, overall the solution would be slightly acidic. And what if we had two, uh, a salt where the uh, conjugates or the components, one was the conjugate acid of a weak base and the other was the conjugate base of a weak acid. Well, what now? This should make the solution slightly acidic but this should make it slightly basic. It's gonna depend on the respective Ka and Kb. Whichever one is larger is gonna win out. If this is a better weak acid than this is as a weak base, the solution will be slightly acidic. If this is a better weak base than this is a weak acid, then the solution will be slightly basic. And that brings us to these rules right here, kind of breaks down everything we said. If the salt cation is the counter ion of a strong base, and the anion is the conjugate base of a strong acid, it'll be neutral, it'll have no effect. Na is the conjugate acid of a strong base, it has no effect on the pH. Cl minus is the strong, uh, conjugate base of a strong acid, so it has effect, no effect, so overall, no effect, neutral pH. Same for all of these if you break them down. If the salt cation, if the positively charged cation is the counter ion of a strong base, but the anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, it will form a slightly basic solution. And 
Uh, if our cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base and the anion is the conjugate base of a strong acid, only the cation will have an effect on, in this case, we'll have in a slightly acidic solution. And then if we see something like this, where our positively charged ion is a small, highly charged metal ion, and the conjugate base has no effect, then our small, highly charged metal ion is going to take over. We're going to get a slightly acidic solution. Um, and then in this case, where we'd have both the cation being the conjugate acid of a weak base, the anion being the conjugate base of a weak acid, whichever one has either the stronger Ka or Kb will determine is the solution slightly acidic or basic. Or if somehow they had the exact same Ka and Kb, then it would be neutral. And this kind of breaks it down again in table form. What do you need to look for? Uh, what's happening with that cation, that anion in regards to the pH? So which anions act as a weak base? So here again, we'd have to think about what's our conjugate. So we're going to protonate each of these. These are our bases. So if we add an H to this, what do we get? HCl, strong acid. So that's not going to be it. What about HBr? Hydrobromic acid, strong acid. That's not going to be it. How about HF, hydrofluoric acid? Well, that's a weak acid. So that means that's a weak base. Which ionic compound forms an acidic solution when dissolved in water? So what we're looking at now is the cation, the positively charged component, and how does that relate? Well, here we have NH4. That is the weak, uh, or that is a conjugate acid of a weak base. So that's good. That's going to potentially give us a weak acid. Bromide is the conjugate base of a strong acid. So that's not going to have any effect. So that should probably be acidic. How about KCl? K plus is the conjugate acid of a strong base. So that's no effect. Cl minus is the conjugate base of a strong acid. So that's no effect. So this is neutral. Na plus, conjugate acid of a strong base, no effect. HCO3 minus is the um, conjugate base of a weak acid. So this would actually be weakly basic. So A should be the one that's going to give us an acidic solution. Um, so that's everything to do with the acids, the bases, the, the, the salts. Easiest thing, like I said, break it down to the component. If you have the conjugate base, you have the negative component, add a proton, see what the acid is. If you have the, um, the positively charged component, is it a metal all by itself? Add an OH and you know then its conjugate's probably a strong base. If it isn't, if it has protons, remove one, see what is that conjugate base. Again, the best way, start working problems from the end of the chapter, see what you understand, what you don't understand, see if you pick up the trend. Uh, video ended up being longer than I want it to be, but hopefully the explanation is good. Uh, Auf Wiedersehen, I'll see you uh, in the next chapter.